mizmor le David, Adonai mi agur bi halacha, mi ishkon bahar kachecha, halech tamim ufoel tzedek, vidover emet bilvavo. Lo ragal alishono, lo asa lerehu raa, vecharpa lo nasa al krovo. Nivzebe nav nimas, vet yere Adonai chabed, nishbal la haravalo yamir. O Lord, who will dwell in your sanctuary? Who will live with you upon your holy mountain? She who lives with integrity, who does what is right, who speaks the truth in her heart, who does no evil to a fellow human being. Whoever does these things shall stand firm forever. Mizmor le David Adonai ro'i lo echsar binodeshi yarbitzeni almei menuchot yinaleni. Nafshi yishovev yancheni v'maglei tzedek l'man shemo. Gam ki eilech b'gei tzalmavet lo ira ra ki ata imadi. Shiftecha u'mishantecha hema yinachamuni. Ta'aroch l'fanai sholchan neged sorai. Dishanta v'ashemen roshi kosi revaya. Achto v'chesed yir defuni kol yemei chayai v'shafti b'vet Adonai li'orech yamim. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He has me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He guides me on paths of righteousness. He revives my soul for the sake of his glory. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no harm. For you are with me. Your staff and your rod, they comfort me. You set a table inside of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall abide in the house of the Lord forever. Jerry, you said that you... Uh, you fell in love with Susie because she didn't have one mean bone in her entire body. I'm sure when you said that, I don't think you had consulted her x-ray. I think you knew it, though, because you lived with her day after day after day. You didn't need a doctor's report to tell you that. Because a lifetime of living with her and seeing her day after day uh, gave you the expertise. How did she get that way? How does someone live without the meanness that captures all of us from time to time. She was small. She was, what, five feet tall, petite, but she had a huge heart. How does someone who is little leave such a huge gap in people's lives? Because she was all heart. To her, love meant everything, and she acted out of love. Her generosity, her selflessness, out of love. She was humble in spirit. She never really spoke a lot about herself. Jerry, you would want to buy her things, and she wasn't showy. She wasn't fancy. She didn't want need them. She related much more to the waiter, to the gardener, to the person working in her home than anything showy. She was much more turned on to things that she felt of as being real. Now, we speak of real, like we speak of real diamonds, and we speak of real jewels and real sapphires. That's not what she thought of as real. To her, love was real and relationships were real. She remembered people's birthdays. She remembered people's anniversaries and special occasions in, in their lives. To her, that was real. She cared for everybody, and she showed everyone how much she cared, and that was real. She was an irreplaceable friend, and that was real. Alan, you and she had her, your regular conversation. Diane, you said she had a regular conversation with you. She gave of herself. She never held, she never held on to resentment that would take away from the moment. She wanted to be real in the moment. She forgave others willingly and easily. She didn't want to harbor negative feelings that would in any way get in the way of what was real. And real meant continuing a relationship. And that's what life was all about to her. Now I know that Susie lived with her routines and with her patterns. Lunch at 3 p.m., I understand that. Certain food favorites that had to repeat it every day, tuna fish and potato chips for one, I understand, I understand. She had her daily routines to be sure. But you know what, she had some other daily routines. And the most important daily routine in her life was that she loved her family every single day of her life. That was her routine, that's the routine. That was the routine we should remember. 
every single day of her life, and she verbalized it to them. Now, Jody and Steve and Seth, your mother never held back when it came to verbalizing and expressing how she felt and saying, I love you. She was, she was also a wonderful and a warm and dedicated grandmother. She didn't want to leave anything unsaid. And I know the three of you, your, her kids, marveled at their parents' love affair. Jerry, ever since you were, what, 13 or 14 years old, in junior high school, Jerry, your subjects, the subjects in school that you studied were English, history, algebra, and Susie. And I will tell you, and you know this, the course with Susie was going to teach you much more about life than any other subject. You learn how to love. And you learn how to be loved. You were then and you are now forever connected to her. That's how people always thought of you and will think of you, together. Two teenage sweethearts who remained teenage sweethearts even when they weren't teenagers anymore. You promised her father that you would take care of her. And you kept your promise. You always did. It didn't matter whether you were married here or in Monroe, Michigan, that you were married on April Fool's. What matters is that you were going to be together. You took care of her in health. You took care of her in illness. She would call your name and you would be at her side. I know she loved to travel. She enjoyed when she was healthy enough. She enjoyed Florida, the sun. She was a good golfer. She loved to shop. I know she had certain superstitions. People would sneeze or what you said, passing under a railroad or a train, and many others I'm not listing. You know what? Experts say that we all develop certain superstitions because we're trying to find a way to control what happens to us. Somehow we try to convince ourselves that if we follow certain superstitions and rituals, we can prevent bad things from happening, if it were only so. But it's not. And no matter how hard Susie tried, neither she nor anyone else can avoid bad things. Her mother died when Susie was still quite young, 24 years old. It was an unexpected and unanticipated and unprepared for loss. And it changed her life. And she had difficulty getting over such a loss. It made her worry more, made her stress more. And her life's journey went off course into periods of darkness. Those were tough times to be sure. But she faced her weakness, she faced her challenges, she emerged and she found herself, and again, she spread the love. I know that you are very proud of her for, for getting, to love, getting back love in her life. I know when you'd all go somewhere, your mother would say, go safe and sound, and come back safe and sound. I think, I think she lived her life, she, she came into this world and she was safe and sound, and with your love, she, she lived her life safe and sound ultimately with your love. I know you did everything you could to help your mom in this last period of her life when she herself was facing illness. I know it's difficult at times and she never complained about it. Jody, I know you had a very insightful conversation with her about fears and you felt close for having that moment. Jerry, during this last period, once again, all she had to do was to call your name and you were there. Some of the really good people in life are not found in the headlines, and they're not find, found in the news of the day as reported, and they're not found in the uh, statements of major networks. Some of the really good people in life are all around us. And if we're lucky, some of those good people are right there in our own lives, adding a layer of love to all those with whom they share their time. No one in this room is exempt from the sadness and illness and the end of life that all experience. But we hope and pray that we can be surrounded by the love that Susie gave and the love that she received. She lived with a good name and she died with a good name. I know there are some cousins, there are some grandchildren that are going to come up, I believe, and give a word. me to talk in front of 
this is very, very unlike me to talk in front of a lot of people, but I owe it to my Mimi, so. Um, I know that everyone here's hearts are breaking over the loss of my Mimi. She was probably the sweetest, most loving, kind-hearted person that anyone in this room has had the honor of knowing. But today, instead of mourning her death, I want to celebrate her life because it was most definitely a life worth celebrating. In the past couple of years, I've had to attend the funerals of two of my friends who passed away in their 20s. During those times, people grieved over the lives they could have had and all the things they didn't get to do. However, Mimi got to do all of the things. Since seventh grade, Mimi and Papa have had a fairy tale romance most people dream of. The kind people only think is real in TV and movies. She had kids and grandkids, a beautiful house, best friends since childhood, and the cutest puppies, Chloe and Kara. Papa gave her a life fit for a princess, filled with her favorite things like getting her hair and nails done, going out to eat, shopping, and traveling. To say her life was fulfilling would be an understatement. One of the main things I want to talk about today is my gratitude towards Mimi. She raised me since I was a child and was more of a mom to me than a grandma. Growing up, my friends always knew that when I referred to my parents, what I really meant was my grandparents. Through thick and through thin, my memes was always there for me. In the darkest of times, she was my light, and being around her made everything brighter and happier. As a little girl, one of my favorite things to do was sit in Mimi's bathroom while she was getting ready for bed. And when I say getting ready for bed, I don't mean <laughs> throwing on her pajamas, brushing her teeth, and calling it a night. It was an entire three plus hour ritual of putting on <laughs> creams and serums, brushing, flossing, combing, and who knows what else. I would sit in her bathroom and talk and laugh with her while I watched her meticulously do each step. By the end, she would be covered in, in grease and I would cringe when she would kiss me and get it all over me. But that was her secret for looking as good as she did. And when my boyfriend goes to bed at night, I now get all greased up too, just like her. However, however, the best part of the nights were what came after getting ready for bed, the midnight snack. But in true Mimi fashion, it was not just a snack. It was a 10 course elaborate spread, neatly arranged on paper towels at around 11 p.m. every night. Periodically, she would make changes to her stack. Oh. When I was little, I remembered it was Bob Evans, mashed potatoes, and McDonald's ice cream. Um, then it, it involved, evolved from turkey sandwiches to tuna to corky soup to Eisenberg hot dogs and so on, accompanied by an array of baked goods, chips, jello, and her beloved prunes. I know I mentioned before that Mimi was like my mom, but she was also my partner in crime. When I was young, we would go on a girl's trip every year to either Chicago or New York. We would shop all day, followed by dinner, Broadway shows, and of course, a late night snack from room service. She knew I'd be fast asleep by the time our food arrived, but she always insisted on ordering me something just in case. My poor papa. I'm surprised our little trips didn't give him a heart attack. I would always tell Mimi how scared I was to get home for him to see all the shopping bags and damage we did, but she was never scared. She would tell me, well, if he's mad, then that's just too bad. <laughs> As I got older, my vice turned from shopping to horses. Mimi would take me to the barn every single day, rain or shine, and stay with me for hours as I rode. She never complained that it was too cold, too hot, too dirty, or smelly. Since it made me happy, it made her happy too. She loved brushing the horses and tack the, tacking them up. Half of the time she would do it wrong, like put the saddle on backwards, but she was just so cute, I would just laugh, fix it, and let her keep going. When I turned 15, those rides to the barn turned into driving lessons. Papa would always call us on the way and say, you better not be letting her drive. And Mimi would be like, no, of course not. <laughs> and then when we would get back to her, her house, we would stop at the beginning of the street and swap places. And so Papa never knew that I was driving. <laughs> 
Anyone who has ever driven with me would probably not be surprised that she taught me everything I know about it. Um, I could go on indefinitely about all the special um, memories I have with Mimi. No matter what we were doing, our time together was always filled with love, happiness, and laughter. And I will forever be grateful for that. Uh, in honor of Mimi, I vow to keep her spirit and traditions alive. To always pull my ear twice after sneezing. To toast to health and family health every dinner. To remind people to go safe and sound and come in safe and sound. And to always offer others my food, regardless of if they want it or not. And of course, to always be unconditionally kind, warm, and loving. I was so lucky to have someone like Mimi in my life, and now it's my turn to pass it on and be a Mimi to others. Love you, memes. Okay, um, I'm going to read something on behalf of Jody that she wrote to Mimi. God, thank you for what you've given. Thank you for what you've taken, and thank you for what you've left. Mimi, my mom was a woman I could actually call a lady. She had class and did the next right thing always. She had a heart of gold which touched everyone she knew and did not have a mean bone in her body. She was a shining example of God's love, unconditional love to all her kids, grandchildren, relatives, and friends. Mom, you are in my heart today and always. Not a day will go by that I won't feel your presence or ask for your help. I love you forever, Jody. And I'm also going to, I'm going to add a statement uh, from Seth that I'm reading in his, in his voice. Thank you all for being here and sharing your love and affection for Susie, my father, and our family. While the world seems a little more lonely Without my mother being here, her memory lives on. She prided herself as a loyal partner, friend, and confidant to my father, my family, and I'm sure the reason you have come here today. While we all have wonderful stories and memories of Susie, for me, her life and legacy is defined by the love for her family, and most notably, her unwavering love and devotion for and to my father, Jerry. For many of us, the words, for better or worse, have come to symbolize the marriage contract. Susie did not view marriage or friendship as something that could be described by words. She lived her vows of love, devotion, and friendship. Even as age began to complicate her life, one thing always remained clear. She had unshakable commitment to Jerry. In fact, as my mother's health began to deteriorate over the last few years, her bond with my father became even stronger. As many of you know, my parents viewed ML as their home kitchen. <laughs> and they are at home almost every night. People always would tell me they saw my parents at ML. If you were there, you first saw either Jerry or Susie and knew the other one was not far behind. This was not simply because they were each other's caretakers. They empowered each other to keep moving forward. And because of this, they, inv they enjoyed the invaluable benefits that friends and family provided. Our family has enjoyed many personal and financial successes. My father would agree that none of these compare to the gift that my mother gave us all in terms of her steadfast love, commitment, and devotion. As my father's dedicated life partner, Susie will always be the best and most cherished partner that my dad has ever had. As such, it is my hope that my children and all of you are lucky enough to experience the type of partnership that my parents enjoyed. From Seth, thank you. Thank you. Please rise now for the memorial prayer. El mole rachamim, shochen bam romim, hametze menucha nechona, tachat kan fe hashchina, bemalot kedoshim, utehorim, anabal harachamim astireha, 
Vaseter kenafecha liolamim. Utsror bitzrach hamit nishmata. Adonai hu nachalata. Vetanuach bishalom amishkava. Venomar amen. May we remember all of the worthy and the righteous deeds that she performed in the land of the living. May her soul be bound up in the bonds of eternal life. God is now her portion. May she rest in peace. And we all say amen. Let's be seated. We want to offer our condolences, of course, to the family, uh, to Jerry and Jody and Steve and Seth, uh, Mona, Lisa, uh, to Alan and Reggie, to the grandchildren, Sari and Zach, Shana, Alex and Tessa, Dana and Chad. The family will be receiving friends uh, at the Shiva visitation, which begins at Beachmont today, following the full burial at the sur at following our burial service at the uh, graveside, the uh, Shiva visitation begins immediately following uh, at Beachmont on Chagrin Boulevard. It continues today until 8 p.m. Tomorrow, Shiva will be at the home of Jody Severin in Orange. The address is 3919 Meadow Lane, 3919 Meadow Lane, Orange. That's tomorrow from 1 to 4 and 7 to 9. 1 to 4, 7 to 9 tomorrow, today at Beachmont. We're now going to pause in the service momentarily to allow us time to arrange the processional to the burial ground. Please remain in your seats for another moment, but the pallbearers should now come forward. 